to Cookie and Pam's place. Oh my goodness, we are getting ready to make English muffins. You can use them with jelly, you can make sandwiches out of them. They are absolutely delicious. And the best thing about these that we're going to make today, two ingredients and no oven. None whatsoever. Oh my goodness, they are absolutely amazingly delicious. Come with me, I'll show you what to do. Okay, before we get started, if you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Take a second and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so you won't miss anything. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you and channel members, oh my goodness. I appreciate you so very much. Okay. Without further ado, like I said, we need two ingredients. This is yogurt. I am using plain yogurt. You can use Greek yogurt. I don't like Greek yogurt, so I'm not using Greek yogurt. And this is self-rising flour. If you don't have self-rising flour, then the recipe turns into a few more ingredients because you'll need to add baking powder, baking soda, salt, etc., etc. So use some self-rising flour. Can you use a substitute flour? You can. The texture will not be the same. Okay, and Greek yogurt, everybody should be good with that. If you want to use Greek yogurt, I just have plain yogurt. Greek yogurt is a little bit thicker. The texture is actually a little bit better. But because I don't like it, I'm not using it. So put it into our dish here. To it, we're going to add two cups of self-rising flour. And we're going to sift the flour in. Just to make sure it doesn't have any lumps or bumps. And I am not going to just measure this perfectly or anything like that. That's one and that's two. And I had about a cup of yogurt. So one cup of yogurt, two cups of flour. That's the ingredients, guys. That's going to do it. Okay, I'm going to get this sifted and we'll be right back. I'm going to move my flour over, but don't get rid of it. You're going to need a little bit more. So put that aside. You want to just combine this and you want to do it nice and slow and soft, so to speak, because you don't want to over mix it because if you do, it'll be tough. So you have to do this very gently until it's mixed enough that it starts to form a dough. Then we're going to use our hands for the rest of the mix. Now we're going to put a little flour on our surface and turn this right out onto the surface. From here, you want to gently knead it. It doesn't need a lot of pressure. You don't need to push it in very hard. If you have trouble uh, with your hands or something, it's a very soft, gentle knead. You don't want to knead it much. You just want it to turn into a soft dough. So just knead it gently. Once you're done kneading it, you want to kind of form it into a log. This is so that we can get pretty much even pieces and take those little pieces off there, put a little extra flour up there. Once you get it into a log, take your cutter, you can use a knife if you don't have one of these pastry cutters. And you want to cut the log first in half. Just eyeball it. Then you want to cut each one of these sections into thirds. Once they are cut, kind of sit them aside. Make sure you sit them on some flour so they won't stick to your... Um, cutting surface or your baking surface and you just want to take one and put a little flour on your finger so it won't stick and you want to roll it and make it into a disc each one make it into a dish kind of just fold it over make it nice put a little extra flour on it if you need it and shape it into a nice disc they should be about a fourth to a half inch thick then find a place on your cutting board or your baking mat. And I like to put a little cornmeal. The cornmeal is not necessary for any function of the English muffin. It just kind of gives it more authentic look. Go ahead and sit it on that 
and I'll be sprinkling some more right on the top of it, just a little bit. It just gives it that authentic look. So it's not necessary and that's why it's not listed as an actual ingredient because it's not going to make a break the taste of your English muffin, so to speak. Okay, so I'm going to form the rest of these and we'll be right back. Okay, you can cook these in a cast iron skillet, but a non-stick skillet like my Chef Foundry ceramic skillet works best. As you all know, I love cast iron. This is my second favorite skillet in the whole world is my Chef Foundry set. You will need to put a little oil in it, maybe about a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon, no more than that. I'm using Strength Genesis macadamia nut oil. You can use olive oil if you don't have any macadamia nut oil or if you don't use it. So just put just a little bit of oil in the bottom of your skillet, just like that. Then take a brush and brush it all around. You must cook these on very low heat. So make sure that you turn your skillet on low, although it's non-stick. We still, for the English muffins, need a little oil for the proper texture. So just move it all around. While the skillet is still cold, go ahead and place your English muffins in there. I like to place it with what I would call the top side down first. Then we're going to put a top on it. Let them cook until this side is nice and golden brown. Okay, so we have been cooking for about, oh, six to eight minutes, and it's time to flip them. We're going to flip them over. Oh my goodness, look at that. So just go ahead, flip them over, cover them back up, and let them continue to cook. We are done. Don't they look amazing? Homemade English muffins. Look at that, guys. Oh my goodness. Delicious. Oh my. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, now you know we have to taste them. I've got a little pepper jelly here. Ooh, I love, love, love pepper jelly, but you can use anything you want. Make a sandwich, ham, egg, and cheese, sausage, egg, and cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese, egg, and cheese, just egg, gravy. You can do so much with English muffins. They are amazingly delicious. I'm going to bring you all up close so I can break into it so you can see the inside of them as well. Then we'll do our taste test. But before we go there, if you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out here today in my kitchen with me. I really do appreciate you. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for keep coming back over and over again. And channel members, thank you so much for your loyal, faithful support. Okay, let me bring you guys up closer so we can see the inside. Okay, these are still super hot, so I'm gonna hold this on a napkin in my hand because I wanna go ahead and show you guys. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Let's take a look, take a look. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Oh, but look at the texture of that English muffin. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh my goodness, I love, love, love English muffins. Look at that, guys. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, oh my goodness. Yes, mm, 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 delicious. If you all like English muffins, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you like to eat with your English muffins. Okay, so I'm just gonna break off a piece. Oh, I didn't show you all the other side. Well, this is what the other side looked like before I cut it. See, this is the top half. Let's put it back together. Top half, bottom half. <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Ooh, I like the bottom half preferably because it's a little bit thinner than the top half, but that's all buns to me. I always like the bottom of the bun, the bottom of the hamburger bun, the bottom of the hot dog bun. Ooh, yes, I'm dropping this all over the place. Let's give it a taste. 
Mm. Mm, mm, mm. The perfect taste, the perfect texture. These are amazingly delicious. Ooh, I should have put some butter on here first, guys. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna go grab my butter. Mm, mm, mm. I need my butter. Lots of butter. And I will see you all next time. The good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Bye-bye.